But what happens if I switch it all off? Now, if you're deaf, you have several ways of understanding what other people are saying. There's lip reading, and there's sign language, which relies on hand gestures. And for loads of deaf people, these things work really well. But doctors are making amazing medical advances in improving people's hearing. This is Matthew. He's 12. He's deaf and uses BSL, British Sign Language, to communicate. I'm not very good at it, so Matthew has brought along his interpreter. And how long have you been deaf for? Since 2001. So your whole life? Yeah, yeah, I was born deaf. Matthew's here to get a cochlear implant, a tiny little device that replaces a bit of the ear, which in some deaf people doesn't work. Sound travels in waves through your ear to the cochlea. Inside the cochlea, tiny hairs pick up the vibrations from these sound waves and convert them into signals that are sent to the brain. Matthew is deaf because the hairs in his cochlea can't do this. But the implant sorts this by sending sound signals through wires instead. So I've never seen this operation before, so I'm very excited. Good luck. Leading the team today is head surgeon James Ramsden. Now, this surgery is not for the squeamish. But this is a cochlear implant, which is what Matthew's having fitted. This bit is a microphone. It hooks over his ears, and it's what hears what's going on in the world around him. And it attaches with a magnet through the skin to this bit. This bit sits under the skin, and it's these little wires that go into his cochlea and send the electric impulses into his brain. That's what allows him to hear. Absolutely extraordinary to be holding one in my hands. So what James is doing now is lifting the skin off the back of Matthew's skull to make a little pocket where the device can sit. The surgeon uses a microscope which allows him to work in very small spaces and use a tiny drill. So on the big screen you can see it really well, but in fact in real life the tip of that drill is about this big. It's smaller than a grain of rice. Having drilled through to the inner ear, we can now see the opening that leads into the cochlea itself. Next is the tricky bit. The wires from the implant need to go through the tiny opening and straight into the cochlea. Luckily, James has a very steady hand. The operation's basically over. They're just sewing up the cuts behind Matthew's ears. But we won't be turning on those cochlear implants yet. Matthew has to wait a couple of weeks for everything to heal. Matthew's back with mum and dad and interpreter Mark to have the cochlear implants turned on, and he can't wait. Then we're going to do a little bit of testing. When you hear a beep, we just want you to put one of the fish here into the pot. Will Matthew's implant enable him to hear? Will he get any fish in the pot? Wow. Good. <laughs> well done. He caught that. And it's put a big grin on his face. He's hearing lots of beeps, and then Matthew hears something he's never heard before. Matthew. Matthew. Hey, was that you, Dad? Who said my name? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really nice. Um, I shut my eyes, and my father said my name. And I knew something was being said, so when I opened my eyes, I checked. Did you just say my name, Matthew? And he just said yes. Well done, Matthew. So Matthew is going to be hearing more sounds than ever before, and all because of this, his cochlear implant. Some sounds he's going to be hearing for the very first time. It's absolutely incredible.